Uh, President Lula was on PBS's NewsHour last night. And this is interesting because, I mean, basically, there's a whole process that I've talked about, and please look up both the interview I did with him and the coverage overall of this Lava Jato task force backed by the DOJ, this political warfare that made him a political prisoner and paved the way for Bolsonaro, included not only was the press complicit, uh, much of the press cheerleaded it on. And I don't know about PBS's coverage specifically, but I do know that everybody from the New York Times to the Guardian had just awful coverage with regards to this. Bolsonaro is so uniquely reckless. I mean, obviously he parallels Trump and the Republicans, but uh, Brazil is going to has more cases, I think, than the rest of Latin America combined. Now, obviously, part of that is population, but also it is just uh, it's people in really close living conditions, like in favelas. It's indigenous communities uh, getting exposed to, I mean, exposure to any kind of novel uh, uh, virus uh, for them would be particularly dangerous. Let alone Corona, that's dangerous for everybody. And Jair Bolsonaro is firing health ministers for talking about social distancing. He's he's putting out videos, and I have mixed feelings about some of this in general, but I mean, he's a head of state who's getting videos pulled from social media platforms for giving misinformation. I think the extremeness of how ridiculous it is, uh, combined with the revelations about the corruption of Lava Jato, are allowing Lula to be treated a fraction of what he should be treated like, which is as a incredibly important and respected elder statesman. Anyways, here he is on the news hour with uh, um, just yesterday on PBS talking about the coronavirus in Brazil. Late last week. In late 2019, former Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, known widely just as Lula, walked out of prison after 580 days and stepped right back onto the political stage. Today, I'm a guy that doesn't have a job, a president without a pension, not even a television in my apartment. My life is totally blocked. The only thing I'm certain of is that I have more courage to fight than before. His top targets? The current president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, and his allies, who Lula claims wrongfully convicted him of corruption in 2017, a conviction he's now appealing. Today, the focus of Lula's criticism is Bolsonaro's mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have an invisible enemy which we do not know. We do not have the medication to cure it. And many leaders, such as the president of Brazil and the president of the U.S., are not treating it seriously with the necessary precautions to face the pandemic. To date, more than 18,000 Brazilians have died of COVID-19. And the virus is running rampant through vulnerable communities, the sprawling, crowded urban areas known as favelas, and among indigenous communities in the Amazon and other remote regions. The death toll in Latin America's largest country is now the sixth worst in the world. The total number of infections ranks third globally. But experts believe the government is likely vastly under-reporting the number of cases and fear what will follow. Do you believe that Brazil will become the next global epicenter for this pandemic? I think Brazil runs the risk of becoming the next epicenter of the pandemic. The country alone has more people contaminated and deaths than all of South America. The problem we have in Brazil, and this is my present concern, is that the pandemic is beginning to reach the poorest places and peripheries throughout the country. Like President Trump, President Bolsonaro downplayed early concerns over the virus. He clashed with health officials, firing his first health minister who criticized his approach. His second health minister stepped down after just one month on the job. And he's peddled misinformation, leading both Facebook and Twitter to remove his posts, saying the drug hydroxychloroquine was, quote, working in all places. Bolsonaro, who's so far been unable to make good on his promise to fix a faltering economy, has also pushed for Brazilian businesses to reopen, mimicking President Trump's message. People are dying. They are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But more will die. Much, much more. If the economy continues to be destroyed by those measures. 
And just like Trump supporters, Bolsonaro's backers have taken to the streets in defiance of local social distancing orders. President Bolsonaro. President Bolsonaro likes to copy to repeat President Trump's actions. That is, President Bolsonaro believes President Trump is a higher being, so he simply copies everything Trump says. And Bolsonaro does not discuss the pandemic. He discusses any topic. He offends the Supreme Court, native indigenous peoples, blacks, women, Congress, Senate, the opposition, governors, mayors, but he does not take care of the pandemic. In recent weeks, though, Lula has escalated his attacks. And it goes on to talk about how Lula is now trying to uh, strategize getting Bolsonaro impeached. But I just like that part where he's like, he's a thinks of Trump as a higher being. He he in a previous interview, he called Bolsonaro. He was like, he's like, Trump's just rich Bolsonaro and Bolsonaro likes him because he's rich. Like he he's very good at specifically disrespecting and unmanning Bolsonaro, which I know. And especially when it's on an American outlet freaks Bolsonaro and his allies out. But this well, is, there's parallels between the US and the UK, but I mean, people really need to look at like the Americas as a political block because this Republican stuff is not only a product, obviously of traditional US interference and support for right-wing parties, but things like the Atlas Network, which the Koch brothers funded to push extreme libertarian stuff across Latin America. And it's coming home to roost, of course, because you know you have essentially Trump and a Republican governor presiding over Brazil, and it's a catastrophe. Um, so, yeah. yeah. It's almost like we're in a global fight against a common enemy. Yeah, it's, fascists, it's, a, it's very easy to just uh, minimize fascists by relation because they're so hierarchy focused. So all of a sudden you say, yeah, you're a, mini, you're a wannabe Trump. Um, I mean, some people probably think that's cool in Brazil, but, you know. He knows how to, it's, it's good. It's good disrespect. Yeah. It's good disrespect. And the tenor of like, it just used to be reported. Oh, he's just convicted of corruption. Nobody would mention at the very least that it was highly disputed, let alone that there was never any material evidence that it was clearly a political operation. So the whole way in which that's being presented on a U.S. mainstream news outlet is changing significantly. Sort of like how in a couple of years, Netflix or somebody will do some documentary on how horrible. Yeah, maybe. Well, they kind of did that with the great Petra Costa one. But I'm thinking, uh, you know, in Bolivia, Bolivia will be the next one. They'll do in a year. So everyone will be like, oh, my God, that was so bad. Did you know that Ava won? Yes, (laughs) I did. You're right. (laughs) This organization of American states, we better take a closer look at this. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Makes you really raise an eyebrow. Uh, I liked see. how he brought in uh, intersectionality a little bit too. Just like name checking the culture wars nonsense that the right is trying to keep going in order to distract from the real stuff that's happening in the world. Yeah, that's I mean, all, it's, it's just content labor, for them. It's con- you know, it's also. I mean, that's the labor base. That was even pre any rhetorical strategies like that. I mean, the Workers Party merged from. It's it's the same thing we're talking about in the first half. It's social democracy across in the economic realm and then civil equities for all. I mean, it's very that's that's before that, you know, those those rhetoric, rhetorical styles were developed. Um 